Good evening, everybody. I'm not scheduled to be on tonight, but I do have an hour with you. Or to just fill up air time, whichever way is easier for you to think. I'll tell you guys what. I've been racking my brain over a small piece of code. That was happened early this morning with mobile sites. How many of you have put together a mobile website? Because if you have, I'll tell you what, when you do it the uh, cascading style sheet way, it can become quite, uh, you have a lot of ratios to work with. Which takes what? Math. No shortcuts. I can't seem to get a break. Uh, anyway, it's good to join you. How many of you were here for the conversation last night? We were about to get into something, a change in dynamic of these places. And what changes have come? As you guys may or may not be aware of, the weather is damaging lots of crops. Are you guys aware of that? Damaging lots of crops. I'll tell you, we're in that time where we have to really buckle down, hold on. Most importantly, stand strong for somebody else. And that's very important for each of you. To be in a mindset where you can actually stand strong for somebody else. Given the troubled times that we have seemed to enter into, well, things are going to uh, be upended this summer. Now, some of you may not notice because you have to remember, at the same time these things are happening, there's a harvest also happening. And that begins spiritually. That harvest begins spiritually, internally, inside of you. Where you have real understanding. And I can tell you right now, I, I would trade many things for pure understanding. I really would. And that time is coming. Well, you guys know me. So I'm going to go back. To, I, I can't help it. I can't help but to go back into the uh, to the part we didn't get to. Can't go can't help but to go back. Last night we discussed a type of alliance being formed overseas. We did. It's okay to think that way, right? Like it's happening over there. <clears throat> but two things we need to look at. Number one, many people in the United States outside of those countries of Europe and Asia, they're going to view some decimations. You have to be outside of Europe. Those in Europe you're about to have an issue and a problem. Now, I need to remind you that change is very difficult. It, it's very difficult. But we also have to introduce some real spiritual components to the Word of God. Real, real spiritual components. What do I mean by that? Well, with all these things that are coming, we're forgetting about manifestation of spirits. We forget what mankind is doing right now. We have forgotten about many things. There are stories out there. Many people can't quite uh, capture, right? There are a lot of people that still believe. And people from the planet Lasagna. I'll say this. I'll say this. What if a long time ago, through the flood, the survivors of the flood and of the decimations on the surface of the earth what if they were not all wiped out? Their lifespan being 500 years. What if they found a way through their intellect to do a lot of things like um, biologically create new bodies? What if some of those things can't really be killed? Their spirit still survives. Of course, we know this through books like uh, Enoch and Jasher. When, they, when the Nephilim died, evil spirits went forth from their bodies. And you know what that means? That means the spirit of Goliath is still in the earth. That's what it means. Spirit of Goliath. And it gives a description of these spirits. They go forth to do war, to do battle. They want to kill. They want to conquer and destroy. And then we have Jesus saying there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nation against a nation, kingdom against kingdom. Now, I don't know about you, but this almost directly correlates to the spirits that were uh, came out of the bodies of the Nephilim. What about the archaeological finds? 
Now, the government always, governments of the world, by the way, they keep a cap on it and save Russia. What about all the strange stories you've heard of how people operate and function in the world? Let me give an example of some of these evil spirits. You're in your home, everything is fine, all of a sudden, you are moved to ask the wrong questions. Well, I didn't come by the Holy Spirit. That came from self. It came from your flesh. How do these spirits roam the earth? And they do roam the earth. They go from vessel to vessel seeking where they may attach themselves to. And they will attach themselves to your flesh. All right? Somebody asked last night through an email. They said, uh, I'm confused about living in the flesh. All right? I'm going to clear that up because demons that word coming from intelligence demons are constantly whispering things trying to find a way in many people entertain them by way of thought and then of course it manifests into their doings but there's a type of lifestyle we are to have to live in the flesh is to live your life by the flesh right to walk to walk and to do those things by the spirit is to live by spiritual things to live by spiritual food for example some of you get excited when a football game pops up that has nothing to do with spirit but it also allows you to know that there are parts of your flesh right you can begin to understand your own flesh through its desires why would it desire to see a game and if you begin to contemplate this and you begin to break it down and stop overlooking things you'd say wow I, my flesh desires a fight right honestly is it harmful to the one watching no the only thing that becomes harmful is when we desire it so much that we begin to do things to obtain it to walk by the flesh is to be guided by the flesh to be guided by emotions to be guided by flesh desires natural desires flesh is natural right it is the natural way to live by the flesh is to live by your natural way like an animal doing everything you do based upon desires right what makes a dog do what it does a man can give a dog commands it teaches patterns to that dog the dog is very smart figuring out the patterns of its owner. But it cannot help you pay bills or anything else. Right? <clears throat> when it desires something, you exist to give that dog its desires. When it's lonely or it needs to be held or something like that, it'll come around you simply so you can pet it. And that ends up, you end up scratching it, grooming it, and everything else. Maybe it had a flea, you thought it needed a hug. So what I'm saying is to live your life by flesh is to live it naturally unto the flesh, unto those things of the flesh. Well, that is the world of which these evil spirits exist. To walk by the spirit is to be guided or led by the spirit. For example, let's say you're hungry, very hungry to the point of collapse. But then you witness someone in trouble. Right? In those situations, you, you begin to gauge exactly who you are. Some people will yield and go get something to eat and then attempt to help the person or say, well, I can't do it. I'm in no shape to do it. I have to eat. So they're going to feed themselves. Still, you have another person that may go directly to the individual. Forget about eating, their stomach growling and everything else, and they're starving to the point of pain. But they're so moved, right, by the other individual. And they're led in a different direction. So to be led by flesh is something you say yes to. To be led by spirit is something you say yes to. Those things of the spirit are the words of our Lord. When he says, hold your tongue, do you still speak or hold your tongue? You may say, how does he say, hold your tongue? When you're speaking to anybody, there are points 
and something will nudge you and say, don't say a word. Don't say a word. You feel blank. You don't feel purposed to say anything. There are other times when you feel purposed by the Lord to show great compassion and patience upon a person. And I tell you, when you're moved by the Holy Spirit, you never make a mistake in such things. To be guided by your flesh, however, I saw your emotions kick in. Right? You may become angry. You may become blindly compassionate. You may do anything. But you're satisfying a desire. So you're being moved by flesh. And then you begin to walk your life out by flesh. And things happen that are not so good. The worst thing that happens in that case is that you're stagnant. You make no progress. When you're moved by the Spirit, you overpower your flesh. You may be hungry, maybe it's inconvenient. And you just don't care because you're going to yield to the Spirit. Right? That's the difference. We all occupy in the flesh, but we're not slaves to it. Are you a slave to your flesh? Do you exist for your flesh, or does your flesh exist for you? I'll submit to you, your flesh exists for you. You don't serve your flesh. Your flesh serves you. But if you yield yourself to its desires, you're serving your flesh. And if you serve your flesh, you serve flesh, period. Because through the flesh, you have attachments with the other side, spiritual realms. I'm only going to talk to you guys for about 20, 30 minutes, but a lot of people out there in this world... Because of the breakdown, it would appear in political things, are going to begin to reach out for understanding by other means. We're going, we're back into a type of witchcraft already. Fables, again, people ghost hunting and all these other things. And they're manifesting. You don't know what they are. Very few people know what they speak to on the other side. The Lord has very clear principles. But we do also know the dead will rise first. You got to ask yourself, will the dead rise all at one time? Or slowly but surely? Hmm? And when they do rise, I guarantee you people won't be able to interpret that very well. What about some of the other prophecies? Van foretell a time is coming when no one will ever make a mistake that God is real. A time is coming when your mind will expand. Your vision will change. It will not be like it is today. All those supernatural things coming back, are you prepared and ready for that? Many people think they have problems. But in the stress of war in America, my Lord, we've been so blessed. Not to have happened to us, what happened to Europe, and what happens in the Middle East. What has happened is this. Many of us over here in the U.S., we're afraid to get our fingertips dirty. We are. We panic if the running water stops. We take no thought of the drama going on overseas. Every single day in the Middle East, Families are running for their lives with their children. And their children don't make it. Every day they don't know what they're going to feed them. Listen, I'm talking about established cities that are no longer established. If you look carefully enough, you can really discern the true news. And it's not what they're telling you. I can tell you that, it's not what they're telling you. We sit over here spoiled, but guess what? We have the word of God, don't we? We have the Word of God. We read the Word of God, some of us. But then we still take it for granted. There will come a time when everybody will say, I wish I could find a Bible. I need that scripture. I know what's in that dark place over there. The spiritual realm will no longer be a joke to people. What certain men know right now will be introduced to the world in the worst way. Men will be thrust into massive confusion. Those who are ruling 
things from behind the scenes or run for the hills. You know, it's really bad when nations are in distress with perplexity. We can't forget that scripture either. Nations in distress? What does that mean? All their plans failed. That means somebody is coming to take power. Now we have two major prophecies about the Antichrist and the Mahdi. Both imply the same character. Both imply the same circumstances of which that character comes forward. Both prophecies are saying the same thing. There are pits in the earth that are highly active. Highly active. There are supernatural zones, they call them. People can't go into. They get sick, instant headaches and everything else. You're driven insane. You go in these areas. They have a place like that in Turkey. And the Mahdi is said to come out of the well. We call that revelation the pit. He comes out of the bottomless pit. They call it something else in Turkey. The Mahdi comes out of a well. We agree. He's in a well. What a nice word. You know what I believe? I believe that long ago. Before Muhammad was somewhat deceived in thinking that Gabriel was speaking to him and gave him years of instruction, I believe the spirit of Antichrist, I believe the spirit of Antichrist took hold in quite a few things more than those who believe in the Mahdi. I believe it also took place and it rooted itself in all politics, all of it. I believe mankind does not have the answer for himself, or we would not have war. I believe that every step man takes, they must do so by force. That's what I believe. I believe that the Antichrist is rooted in all the world. I know that the Spirit stands against Christ, and that's evident in every single country on the face of this earth. I believe that same spirit started many religions, not just the major religions. I believe the operation of Lucifer himself is to manifest himself in many different ways. He will often manifest himself as an angel of light. Do you not know that in India, they call a character Lord Krishna is beginning to appear to people and he's taking them to a place a place where they can be starving. Listen to me, folks. These people are starving and everything else. All of a sudden, they're thrust into this place like a dream and they're smiling. Now they have an anticipation of one of their own deities because of what they were shown. I'll tell you what. My motivation is not behind what the Lord has shown me. It is behind the simple truth, a truth I was born with, which is that Christ died on the cross already. I can't drive that point home enough, because if you start following anything for any other reason, you weaken yourself. Follow no one for what they're going to do, because if they don't have an established truth, and they already did it, it's nothing more than a promise. I know that we have promises on our lives, but I don't follow Christ for the end. I don't follow my Lord nor believe in the Lord for heaven. You see, the Lord already gave his life on the cross. He already died for me. That's enough for me. That's enough for a billion lifetimes for me. I would go through this again and again and again and again because what he did for me, he already did it. So see, while most people are looking for their heaven, and are miserable every step of the way. I'm highly thankful for what he already did. Ladies and gentlemen, that's called strength. All these little fantasy things people have, you're going to lose them. And then what? You're going to lose them. And then what? What happens when you have no comfort? Is that going to shake your faith? 
happens when you're hungry but no way of getting food? Is that going to shake your faith? What happens when you're the household struggling and everybody else is doing fine because they have the mark of the beast and you don't? Most people don't consider the mark of the beast. Well, in the way that I do, I love worst case scenarios. It teaches me not to be foolish with what the Lord has blessed me with now. Can we all agree on this one thing? That our lives can be far worse than what they are. Can we agree on that? Well, let me walk you through something of the beast and the mark. You guys mind? I don't want to waste your time either. But imagine your neighborhood. They have the mark of the beast. You don't. Summertime is here. What are they doing? Barbecuing. Driving their cars. You're sitting in the house. You're starving to death. They're about to kick you out of the neighborhood because you have no lights. You have no water. You cannot go to the grocery store. You're not allowed to hunt. You're not allowed to do those things. So you have to up and go while everybody else is living normal because they have the mark and you don't. Did you ever consider that? Hmm? And people say, well, I don't want to. The Lord said he wouldn't let me. No, he did not. We just read last night, he will wear out the saints of the most high. He will prevail against them. Part of his prevailing is issuing of the mark of the beast. And most people don't comprehend the mark of the beast in the first place. They don't they, listen, there are metaphysical things that are absolutely real. I say metaphysical because you don't understand the full scope of the technology. And so it's like a, a, a some type of um, magic or something taking place. But there are also some powerful entities out there. Powerful. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> you're walking in a world laden with demonic entities. But you're not dead. Which means they cannot kill you. Right? Fact number one. Can they kill you? No. A lot of people say, well, there's going to be, you know, there are aliens up there. And they're, they're, they're just watching Earth. They're going to take us over. For what? Why? For what reason? Why would they come down here and take us over? And if they had that power to do that, why didn't they do it already? I hear a lot of other people, they were talking for the last 10 years, they're going to come and take your guns, and they're going to take everything that you have. For what? If they have that power, why didn't they do it? See, some things are an illusion. It's an illusion. But I can tell you this, something near what people are saying will happen. They just didn't know the methodology behind it. And I'm telling you now, people will run to a protected place in the U.S. here very soon. What happened when Katrina hit? You guys remember that? Did people walk further out into the ocean and say, oh, I'm not going near FEMA. Get away from me. You guys are going to put me in a prison camp. No, it's not what they did. You know what they said? Where's FEMA? The, it was all over the news after people had talked and talked and talked and talked about people throwing people in the FEMA camps and FEMA became this bad name, bad word. When Katrina came, everybody called FEMA. What do you call that? I mean, they were angry calling FEMA. You know what I heard some of the churches say? Well, that's a shame. They didn't respond quick enough. FEMA. The Lord will get them. Wait a minute. Who called out on the Lord? Here's what I'm getting at. We talk about the Lord and the wonderful things he did. But honestly, how many believe in the power of the living God? Uh-oh, see, I'm being moved. I began in one direction, and I'm going totally in another direction. How many of you believe in the power of the living God? How many of you believe in the resurrecting power of Jesus of Nazareth? How many? Because if you do, then I ask you this. Why would you ever spend a day worrying about those things you have no power to change? Why? You have no power to change certain circumstances. Why would you waste a second and worry about them? See, isn't that contradictory, right? That hits you right to the heart right there, doesn't it? But I ask you this. We know this. 
Why in the world would we continue to ignore our own condition this way? Why? See, I get, you know what, even right now, I'm telling you, I'm standing up, right? I'm tense. Because the devil is lying. A true lie is an earthly truth. That's what a true lie is. A logical truth is the devil's lie. Who said, don't, did, did God say don't eat of all the fruit of any of the trees? No, oh, no, he just said don't eat of that one. Because in the day we do, we will surely die. Oh, well, you won't really die. You see, because God just knows that in the day you eat of the fruit, you're going to be like he is, knowing good from evil. The devil told the truth. Didn't he? But, but the premise of his communication was in a lie. You know what the lie was? You know what the lie was? A lie, a lie is a phrase that causes one to be disobedient. That's a lie. Men have defined a lie different from what it originally was. They really have. Because men like to control, you don't believe me? How many of you think drinking wine is terrible? Oh, it's just terrible, don't drink wine. Mankind did that. And then you have people that abused wine. The Bible says don't drink strong drink. Don't drink to the point of drunkenness. But wine can kill life forms in your belly. Wine is also good for your heart. Wine is made from the earth. It is. Who made it bad? Mankind did. So that they could control it. Right? Right? Angela and I were talking about this, and I was talking to her about marijuana. How the founding fathers came over here and everybody was smoking. Everybody was happy. Nobody was fighting. I'm telling you the truth. <clears throat> I'm, I'm telling you the truth. They picked up Indian customs. People are over here dancing around fires with the Indians. But when they ran out of the stuff they could smoke, they began to kill the Indians. I'm telling you, the, go read your history. They were all smoking. They didn't call it marijuana. Go investigate. And then they cut it all off. They did. In fact, when they wrote the Declaration of Independence, everybody was smoking it. Now, I want you to think of something. You're coming to a brand new country. The conditions are brutal. Everybody's saying peace pipes? No, it wasn't a peace pipe. No, it wasn't a peace pipe. But the Indians did introduce it. And it was abundant. It was growing everywhere. Uh, listen, it was all over the place. But people began to trade it for resources. And they couldn't control the trade or the money in there. So they kind of just kicked that out. They, they made it illegal. See, trade was critical back then. It was critical. Most people don't know how trade works, but let, let me express this to you. If you, let's just say, and I said this before, if I have a skill, if I have a skill, Dr. V has a skill, Mark has a skill, right? Oki has a skill, Ronnie has a skill, Angela, an, another skill, author skill, Mark, all our ladies, Jill has a skill. If we have these expert skills and we have squatter's rights over a piece of land, and we know how to really work the land to produce food, right? Of course, we can't eat all that food, right? We can't. But somebody else has a skill set like Dr. V with wood. I don't have a good skill set with wood, but I have food. He has a skill set with wood, so then trade was introduced, right? Trade. This kept happening. It happens today. It happens today. Right? Everybody has a different trade, and this is why you guys may not believe this, but it's so funny. I believe the channel is, uh, uh, if, you, if you go online, and I believe some of the films are still on AMC.com, they used to have these films that they would show children. 
in school, I saw one of those films where, where they would say, you have to grow up and you have to work and become good at a skill so that one day you can have your own house and support your children, right? They call that the American dream. The American dream was that a person could be totally independent by themselves and no matter what they believed in, so long as they contributed to something of the United States, they could become within the rank, within the um, skill sets of what was needed, employment. But they could live the American dream, which was not necessarily to be rich, but to have a home and to have a family and to be able to support that family. That was the American dream. <clears throat> How it got from there to Hollywood, I have no idea. Because that's called the American greed, right? America has turned greedy. A long time ago, one house would support another. Long time ago. Right? A long time ago. <laughs> not so today. Everything is based on greed. Greed is not capitalism, and that's why the system is it's not going to work well. Thus, they have to have the mark. They have to. In, in fact, even right now, do you guys know how many federal employees have been stamped, I'll say, have been stamped? Some of you guys know it. Some of you state troopers, you're about to find out because you're in the first line of a portion of, of civil defense, right? Certainly state troopers because they've been trained in certain types of, well, tactical training going to have to have it too. Every single civilian is going to have to have a bracelet. Kind of like a watch. That's how it begins. A watch. Why? Because we live in a digital world. And right now as we speak, there's no such thing as true security. When they say peace and safety, that just simply means they can control every single person on the face of the earth because they don't know what they're doing. You can't control mankind. You'll have no safety so long as somebody has the potential to be a terrorist. So the only way to really contain that is to know what everybody is doing, what everybody is predisposed to do by way of habits, language, conversation, so on and so forth, and where everybody is. Kim trails go along with that. I know you've heard many stories, but in World War I and World War II, Kim trails are born. It's all part of a big monitoring system. I'll share this with you about chemtrails, a piece I do know about. A long time ago, before computers were actually computers, there was a computer. Right? In World War II, they were trying to find a way to cause ships and planes and everything else to be invisible. Please don't think of the Philadelphia experiment. It's not what I'm talking about. And they would begin to spray to simulate clouds, deep, thick clouds, but it wasn't natural, and so it would always fade away, this, that, and the other, right? But also, they would lose their own planes in that detection area to radar came up. When they invented radar, they found out some very unique characteristics, and that's when different countries began to work with the others. Chemtrails held metallic particles that were reflective of infrared Right? If you reflect infrared, anything flying in between that reflection, you can then pick it up. If you can reassemble that data, you can find out what's interrupting it. So it was more like a dome, is what it was. They also found out, same context, that through that dome and through spraying, through experiments, you had something very close to echolocation, but using light. And they would assemble that data into a living computer or a live computer, which means you could actually look at a representation of the earth with all the little people walking and everything else on there. That thing has gone up all the way today. Harp is involved also. Harp emits. What does it emit? Just find out. It'll go right along with this anyway. And, and every single uh, installation, every everything has more than one purpose. Any building made by any government serves multiple purposes. Oh, just so you understand that. 
right? You can have a barracks, but in the event that something happened, that barracks can be utilized for something else very quickly. Just like some of the uh, car manufacturing companies in World War II, they, they had a mandate. They had to be able to convert themselves to produce military vehicles in time of war, right? So everything was built to have a dual or multiple purposes. Anyway, that plan went up even today, but there's one problem. There's one problem. It's, it's okay to know where everybody is, but you don't know who is who, right? You don't know who is who. To find out who is who, you have things like social media, in which case these people use. Now, it's so funny because through our desires to be able to communicate, which is a good thing, and it always starts innocently, doesn't it? Well, I just sure would like to be able to talk to my sister or brother without all this other stuff. Right. So it motivates innovation. With innovation, you have crooked people back there saying, oh, there it is. So through a need, we develop it. They take it further, utilizing it for something else. Now that we do communicate with each other, we actually submit a psych psychological profile every single month. Every month. So through your own conversations, the computers know who you are. You don't need people, ladies and gentlemen. You don't. You have a rating of types. Each person on the earth who uses a digital device has a rating. Here's what I mean by that. Based upon how you talk and everything else in these uh, artificial intelligence algorithms, fuzzy logic, you name it, is rating you. It's finding you out. It's your the computer systems know you better than anybody could ever know you. All your little secrets and everything else are stored in a computer. Let me tell you how that works. Before I tell you the last part, when you utilize a phone or a computer or something else, and you send a email, private email, you assume it's going directly to the person. Well, technology does not work that way. First of all. All of your information is converted into bytes that can be that, that are broken down, packets that can be transmitted through multiple machines. Everybody has to make money off your email, right? And so it's relayed, you could say, to a major system or a set of systems where it sits. Then when the other person logs on, they access this major system and boom, your piece of mail is in there for them. Right? You think it goes to your computer. No, your computer just reads the system to extract the mail. So all your emails are kept, just so you know. All of them. Because they're all kept, they can be parsed, they can be, uh, you know, analytical queries can be imposed upon your emails and everything else. And so a profile is formed of you. Even your progress. Because the nature of your language will always imply where you are today. Your language last year is not like it is today. There's subtle changes that they can track that can be tracked by a computer. But listen, people are not doing this. You assume people, somebody's looking back at every email you're writing. There's no need to do that. You have a rating. Computers are parsing all that data to get it to you. When you have a phone conversation, do you not know that you're... Listen, this is so funny. A lot of people... This is the way most people think. Well, you talk on a phone. Surely... My voice conversation is not parsed anywhere or anything else, right? Yeah, they have a printout of every phone conversation you've ever made, a type of printout, because it's stored with digital data. Digital data can be presented in any form that it may be easily read or easily interpreted, right? So your phone conversations, your voice is stored, your, your face, your, your eye, you have an eye print already. You do. Your fingerprints are also stored from touching your device too many times. I mean, they get real wild. Why in the world would they make a touch screen in the first place? I'm telling you, it seems wild what I'm saying. But if you really wanted to know who the people were walking on this 3D globe that you have, and you need to categorize them, how do you do that? You need their fingerprints. You need all the points in their face, facial recognition. Fingerprints through your high definition devices. You'd also have to match their eyeball iris 
which will turn into a time security thing. See, they can't introduce this to the public. They're not going to just tell you, hey, we have all of you stored on digital data. No, they're not telling you that. So they have your fingerprints, they have your face, they have your eye. They have your, your, uh, uh, your psychological profiles in there. Your habits, they know what you like, they know what you don't like, they know what offends you, they know what does not offend you. They know if you're sneaky, they know if you're cruddy, dirty, or whatever. They know everything because it's stored on the computer ready for somebody to access. Right? And, oh, and then they go one more step. They keep having people submit their own DNA. Now they have a DNA print to go with that file. They know exactly who you are. The question is, what is all this data about to be used for? You guys remember Anthony Patch? When he was talking about a specific computer, quantum computing? A quantum computer is about the only computer that has the ability to parse access, profile, and output something on everybody every second of every day. We're, we're talking about the whole globe within a second of everybody. It's the only thing that has power to do that, right? Now, if you can do that, then you know that some of the new technology coming out, which is under the guise of artificial intelligence, is actually for a type of monitoring and war machine. That means if somebody did something wrong and somebody put you on probation, your technology and somebody else's technology could keep an eyeball on you. It could also neutralize you. For example, your cell phone can produce 55... About 55,000 watts. 55,000 watts. Now that seems impossible, doesn't it? But it's not. That's a lot of joules. Because it would only be a receiver and a transmitter of the joules already floating around the atmosphere. What you have to do is tune into it, so to speak. Capture it, let it out, and that's it. Anyway. Another conversation. So what are they doing with all this? I'm telling you. If you go to Revelation, you're going to see something that this beast did. And you're letting them know everything about you. Because it's very difficult to keep your mouth closed these days. If we learn something new, we're going to go tell it. They don't need to spy on you. You volunteer everything you know. If you knew a secret, you can't, you have the can't help it, you're going to go tell somebody. If the Lord communicated a prophecy to you, you have the can't help it, you're going to go tell five other people to get confirmation. And they know it too. So as someone like you're in this type of system, this type of jail, you don't know about. And they're utilizing everything against you, just like these things that are happening in the world. You guys remember five, six years ago. I was telling you that most of these circumstances in the world are contrived. Here's how they are contrived. They're contrived through trending. Every time there's a computer-based advisement upon a person in following trends, they know what you're predisposed to do. Like the election with Trump, they knew that people would respond exactly and precisely like they're responding. Right? They knew that. But Trump is still a wild card. You'll find out he really does not fit into the mix. Unfortunately, anybody who does not fit in to these kingdoms and systems that are coming, they go away. They do, they go away. They go away because then you have some sort of a conflagration of issues that come up to the person. It takes them over, it's too much. They may snap, they could snap. Anyway, let me read something to you. Revelation 13, two, 13 uh, chapter 13, four, 13. Here we go. You guys ready for this? Or 12. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Fact number one, this second beast that came out of the earth with two horns like a lamb caused the earth and everybody in the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So you have one beast causing everybody to worship another beast. Right? 
And he doth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in sight of men. I don't know about you, but if I saw a laser coming from a satellite to the earth, that's not impressive. Is it impressive to you? Wouldn't be to me. Listen, and he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. How does he deceive them? By means of those miracles which he had power to do in sight of the beast. How does he deceive those on the earth? By means of those miracles which he had power to do in sight of the beast. His power and deception is his power he exercises. Now, a lot of people may say, well, I'm, you know, that's just not going to, you know, I'm not going to fall for that. But no, 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 no. Let me tell you something I saw in this election. During the debates, a lot of people were empowered. They were at war, I guess you could say. Standing up from the peace of them that was in their candidate. See, if there's a candidate out there with a piece of you in them, same ideologies, saying the same things that you're saying inside, you're drawn into it. You're drawn into it. This guy deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do inside the beast. Why? Because people want to see the miracles now. They're begging for them. They want to see someone rise who has power to do exactly what they're saying. I hear it all the time. I hear people say, well, so-and-so is going to do exactly as he said. Make all that high confidence in someone, right? That's what people want. They're going to get precisely what they want. But he's going to deceive people by this way. And that normally happens. That normally happens. He said to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now, he said to them on the earth, that's a strange phrase. So we have a guy that's deceiving those on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do inside of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live, which had a wound by war and lived. Sword is war, right? And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This is where I want to pause real quick. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So he convinces the inhabitants of the world that were on the earth, which means at the time of his convincing, where was he? Where was he? Remember, the Bible has to be discerned spiritually. He had power to give life into the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and to cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So he gives, he has power to give life unto the image of the beast. What defines life? It's functioning by itself. Autonomy. It's autonomy. Just like just like some of the technology we have today, you could say it has life. It operates by itself. Right? This guy convinces the world. Now, in the book of Daniel, it states he had many of them because he causes them, plural, to rule over many. It's the same thing. Right? He causes them, plural, to rule over many. Right? And, and it also said that he increases them, he, he magnifies them with all sorts of things like we do technology. We do technology the same way. We have started already worshiping technology. See, you are impressed with those things you worship. Uh-oh. And you always get the new version of something. All they have to do is say, hey, 
We have an iPhone 9. I, everybody's going to go turn to the television, the Internet, and everything else. If they start to name these features, here, here everybody comes. Everybody's coming. Now remember, the world will not be able to interpret these things. You will. You have to remember that. The world will know nothing until the flood comes and takes them all away in this modern time, this deluge, but not of water. The world won't know anything. You see, the world already trusts. Whatever you worship, you trust in. Do you know that? I tell you the truth, you trust in your technology. Let me tell you how you've handed many things over to it already. There are some important people in your life. They have a phone number, an email address. You lose your phone and all your data, right? Where, where did you back that up at? You have not backed it up on the computer. That is the best computer. The best memory thing you have is called your brain. No, you are trusting your device with critical data. Life and death information. You're trusting your device with life and death information. Right? You're trusting electronics with life or death information. It's essentially become a device you cannot live without. Because you store and forget. So long as you know you have a number in your phone, you trust that phone is always going to work to give you that number when you need it. You placed your trust in something man-made. And people spend, you know what the majority of the budget or of the spending money in the U.S.? Would you be shocked to know it goes towards both buying this electronic stuff replacing this electronic stuff and investing in this electronic stuff. Wouldn't you be surprised to know that a lot of people spend three quarters of their income on services to support their stuff? Electricity and communication. The highest bills people have right now are communication electricity. In some cases, their communications bill is higher than the rent or and their electric and their communications bill is higher than the mortgage because they have to have it. People spend an average of three to four or five hundred dollars in communications every month alone. You start looking at these numbers and you say, oh boy, because see, we don't think about those things. You know why? Because we said we have to have it. It's just like no one's concerned on how much a person spends on food. We just know the person needs food. Well, now we think in the terms of electronics being the same thing. No one's interested how much somebody pays and such things. So this thing causes the world to make an image to the beast, an image to the beast. And it calls the image of the beast to speak. And it calls as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Here we go with another beast speaking. Everybody knows that that last, that fourth beast within him was born. The one beast that spoke and had eyeballs in the horn, right? And a mouth speaking great things. Here we go again. And what does this image do? It calls us all. Let me read the whole thing in context. 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, for in bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell. Now, see, the mark is for buying and selling. It's telling you about the nature of the beast. If the mark is for buying and selling, and the image that this thing gave life to checks to make sure you have it, and the mark of the beast is for buying and selling, then we know that the image of the beast is another control mechanism, an automated control mechanism. 
So if someone does not have the mark, guess what? They will surely die. They will die because they can't buy or sell. You cannot go out to this world in a lot of places in a city and start hunting. You're not going to go to Detroit and go out in the city and hunt, right? You're not going to do that, right? You won't do it. <clears throat> this whole thing is over the control of buying and selling. This whole thing is over money. The beast is a dodo. But this is a control mechanism. This rules the world. People will chop off their right arm to be able to buy or sell. You'll go into a panic if you woke up one day and your driver's license was gone. All your bank cards were gone. And when you went into the bank and says, well, I, I, lost my, I lost my card. They said, well, you have to wait two weeks before we issue you another one. I guarantee you that if you received another card, and you know your children will go hungry if you can't buy because the store is just not going to give everybody food, right? You would protect that card with your life. You'd protect your license with your life. Anybody ever lose their identity out there? And you forgot it and you go to the bank and they say, well, let me see your ID. Oh, I don't have it. Well, we can't give you any information on your account. Right? And then to get your ID, you have to have a birth certificate. But to get the birth certificate, you have to have an ID. And so it's a mess. You lose your ID, you're, you're just messed up. Right? Consequently, I hope you have your critical papers. You guys had seven years to get your birth certificates, social security cards. Hope you got them. I really hope you have them which are going to be very difficult to come by. And if the computers go down and everything else and you don't have them, you're not going to get one. You're going to be held. They're not going to take your word for it. And if your license has your picture on it, but it's expired, you're done for anyway. It's like not having one. Isn't that ridiculous? Your, your big face, oh, my big head, right there on that thing. But it does, it means nothing if it's one day expired means nothing. You know why? Because the computers will not accept it. And I'm telling you now, if a computer won't accept your identification, you're done for. Like this uh, immigration problem that we have. It's being implemented there. You didn't know this, but the immigrants that come into this country will have to be marked or they will not be able to come in. You didn't know this, but Germany is about to implement the same thing, but the only problem with Germany, they have too many, too many different types of folks over there and you don't know who's who. You just don't. So Germany has a real problem. They really need your prayers. They really do. Because they're going to pay a type of price. Those, those people in that province are, you know, you're facing real terrorism. And I never forget to pray for those folks. I don't. They're facing real terrorism. You guys have vulnerabilities with nuclear facilities that uh, one day for sure. They will get to them. They will. Because most of the people overseas, you really don't know who is who. You really don't. Even over here in America, when you begin to go see, um, uh, when you see your doctor or something like that, are, are, you're, you guys remember when all of a sudden 2,000 rolls around and you don't see American doctors? Even before then, American doctors don't see them. You guys remember that? What happened to all the American? What I'm saying is people who were born here in America without an accent, those type doctors. So what I'm telling you is that most of your, your, your uh, medical personnel are coming from overseas. 
I thought we had the best education. I really did. Anyway, back to the beast. So, no one can buy or sell except the one that has the mark of the beast or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So these things that are going to be erected, you have two components with this thing. Greed, because even in the book of, let me read to you something in the book of Daniel, because it speaks about the image of the beast too, it just does not call it the image of the beast. It's in the book of Daniel, most people don't, they, they haven't uh, inspected that, but it's in the book of Daniel. Let me read to you something here. Daniel eleven thirty eight. Here we go. Oh, let's talk about the guy first. The guy in 37 says, uh, this guy, a king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. Not just one, all, above every god. And shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. Three and a half years. For that that is determined shall be done. All right? Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Previous worship in any God, he, that's it, it's out the window. Nor the desire of a woman, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. This guy will disregard and disrespect all religions of the earth, all of them. All religions of the earth, all of them. Right? That's something most people don't talk about, but listen, it says, but in his estate, in his place, listen what he's going to do. He shall honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and with pleasant things. Now, in Revelation, we just read that this, this thing, this person, told the world to make an image to the beast who had the deadly wound by a sword and, it, and, and but was healed. That they should make an image to the beast. And that they should, and he would cause it to rule over many. Now listen to this, 39, Daniel eleven thirty nine or 38. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most stronghold, major places, he'll do this. Major places he'll do this. He'll do this with a strange God. Whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule them, plural, more than one. He shall cause them to rule over many. And shall divide the land for gain. Now, if you call, if you cause them to rule over many. What do you see here? What do you see? I'll tell you what I see, if you're interested, probably not. I see an individual with a brand new way of living life. I see an individual who wants peace and prosperity for all people. I know that because of the readings. When you read in here, those that eat of a portion of his meat shall destroy him. He'll do what his fathers did not do. He will scatter among them the prey, the spoils, and the riches. So this guy, when he steps on the scene, prosperity is going to be seen. And his system goes out to all the world. He's worshiping a God his fathers knew not. So his father before him may have been one thing, but this guy's not worshiping. He does not regard any God. He regards himself. Do you understand? He regards himself. He doesn't regard any God. He regards himself. He has no regard of a woman. Women mean nothing to him or her or it. No regard of a, but But this guy knows about money. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm not speaking of any human being on the face of this earth. I'm not interested in a person. It is the spirit you need to capture. The spirit. A lot of people, they, they point to every single president. Oh, he's the Antichrist. Five years goes by, nothing happens, or the person dies. 
and it's the next guy and the next guy and the next guy and the, but if we can look at the spirit because all of them are going to have traits from the antichrist spirit itself it is the spirit that will dominate the man but the man has been prepared he comes up from a small people he works deceitfully he comes up and shall become strong with the small people he enters in peaceably right even in, even in the richest places now listen he comes up from a small people <laughs> he shall do that which his fathers have not done nor his father's fathers he'll scatter among them the prey the spoils and the riches and he'll forecast or set up pl plots and plans against every single stronghold And he is the exact one who will stir up his power. He'll stir up his power. Hmm. This guy also comes up. He has a very powerful army. Very powerful. Very powerful. And then it says, They that feed of a portion of his meat shall destroy him. And his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain so we're looking at a true conflict the king of the north and the south already the king of the north the lands are being consumed agreed upon consumed right now and it will not change right now it does not matter what failed what succeeds I'm telling you they're going to become one there is a confederacy right now as we speak don't ever think it won't be because prophecy will be fulfilled. Syria, Turkey, all those places, Lebanon, all those places. And you know what America and Russia is doing? We can't see past a certain point. Only the Christians can do that. You know what? The President of the United States needs a prophetic advisor. They really do. Because I'm telling you now, they're getting it all wrong. They're getting it all wrong. And it's not going to bode well. <clears throat> and we know by prophecy, no one succeeded anyway. Till the time of the end. So listen, this thing sets up and acknowledges these things everywhere and increases them with glory and it says and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over he shall enter also into the glorious land there's that word again the glorious land is Israel, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand Edom, Moab, even the chief of the children of Ammon, look where he is he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape I mean, these are echoed sayings all throughout the word of God too but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver I told you this guy is a greedy guy somebody says why is Jordan so quiet Jordan is the academic brain of a philosophy that has caused the mischief in the Middle East in the first place. Now they, they're not going to openly admit this. That's the way it is. The universities of a specific religion are right there in Jordan. I do not trust Jordan. They change positions too much. And we know that they will be on fire. Just like Gaza will very soon. There will be a push at some of these smaller forces here very soon. I'd say within weeks, when that takes place, people will be drawn in to sides. You know, sometimes, have you ever seen um, um, two people on two opposite teams, they get in an argument? At first, no one is fighting, they're arguing, but they can't resolve their differences. 
So someone throws a punch. And when that happens, both teams join in for the sake of their teammate. So what we're going to see here in the Middle East is something trivial to us. But as soon as a blow is received, the deep, deep heritage of the kings of these countries is going to support the very thing they came from. And it will not be democracy. It won't. You see, because when a person is angry, somehow they're steered right back to their original roots of who they are. Beyond the change and everything else, they become exactly what they were born from. During a time of anger. We're going to witness that. And all the policies and all the talks, all the negotiations are going to fail. Because they're doing nothing more than lying at one table. We should all know by now that politics, it really is negotiation. And they cannot complete all of what they promise. Though they may have a heart to do this, but people get in the way. It's not that these people just outright lie. They can't do everything they promise and they find out too late. The system itself is, is, it really is, it's unfair. I was about to say rigged. It's unfair. It's unfortunate. You can take an honest person, put them in one of these positions, and they will not last. They won't last. They won't last. Anyway. All these things are setting up right before our faces. People will be caught off guard because they think they have more time. Some of you think you have more time. And it causes people not to mentally think through all things in truth. We have to mentally think through these things. But those of you who know these things are surely going to come to pass. Don't waste your time convincing anyone but rather prepare yourselves to receive those who will see it and run for their lives, and they're going to run to you for a real answer. Because there's, it's not going to be like the other days. They're going to say, hey, I need to be saved in truth, not how this other stuff works. Because all hypocrisy is about to be exposed. Part of that will happen through pressure. When people really sustain pressure, the hireling is going to run. The one who did what they did for the sake of substance and money, they're going to run away. Those who did it for the sake of the word of God, money will not deter them. They'll fight even harder, even to the last breath. Spiritually, you can discern who is who already. But in truth... Some of us don't even know who we are because we have not been tested. We may profess and follow a way of being one thing, but I tell you this, even you don't know who you are until you have been thrust into a life or death situation. Then you find out who you are until you're made to suffer terribly. Then you find out who you are. All of us are going to find out who we are. In the meantime, though, We'll continue on a track edifying one another in truth. That's very important. Never edifying a lie. Right? I'm not going to, you guys have never heard me ever say, well, you're, you're not going to suffer a thing in the future. Nope, I'll tell you the opposite. People used to hate me for that. And they're still here. 15, 20 years ago, I used to warn people, don't get your hopes up in escaping anything. But commit yourself to finish this race. That was 20 some years ago. They're still here. A lot of them are falling apart. They can't take it. hundred years ago, people thought they were leaving. They didn't. Before the Holocaust, people thought they were leaving. They didn't. Before World War I, people thought they were leaving. They didn't. During the Civil Wars in America, people thought they would leave before the war ever started. They didn't. We're still here. See, we're not in control of that timing. 
We're not. But we're in control of making a true choice. And as for my choice, I choose to follow Christ. I know his path. You know what the path of Christ is? To the cross. There are many times in your life you've been asked to lay down your life for somebody else. See, I learned that, and I said, well, I can't keep saying no. I learned very early in life that I can't be the most important person in my own life. And I was tried by that knowledge. And I was forced to face death more than once. But on the other side, I'm not hateful. I don't blame the past for anything. I look at the victory and the deliverance and the surety and truth of my Lord who said he would guide me. If he said he would guide me, how can I fall? He said if I follow him, he'll take me and I'll find the kingdom. Well, if that's going to happen, then I can never fall, nor can I be taken out if I'm following him. I don't do that to save my own life, but to follow him. It's to without condition love your brother and sister. And to do so in truth, not lying to them, like they did in the book of Ezekiel, telling them lies, saying that they would have peace. And God said, I have said no peace. Then they spoke out of their own spirit, saying, Thus saith the Lord. And God said, I have not spoken to them. They have weakened my people. They have built up a false wall, and they have daubed it, participating in making it look pretty, and it cannot withstand the blows from the enemy. And the Lord specifically said, to paraphrase, to summarize, you have weakened my people with lies, saying that they're going to have peace, and that they're going to have this and that, and I have not spoken that. In fact, and when you go back in the word of God, he didn't. Until his indignation is complete, the times will grow harder and harder. That's the truth of what he said. Jesus said, you will find rest in me. And sure enough, that's the truth. You know why? Because within him, within him, a part of this race is completed within him. The other part is our endurance by faith to continue to follow him, even when it looks real bad. But that proves if we love the Lord our God with all our hearts and all our souls all our mind, all our substance all our strength and everything else he will prove us Deuteronomy 13 1 through 3 he allowed those false prophets and dreamers of dreams and everything else to come to see if people would be steered away from him come to find out that was a test that we may know he already knows we have to know you know why because once he once he passes his sentence upon all all souls guess what no one will have an excuse we know and if we know we're accountable for what we do we know but he's never going to leave us nor forsake us and for me, it's exciting. Because all too often, we forget we're not going through all those times this way. Oh no, there will be a newness of mind. His strength will be added unto you. You'll be doing victory dances while everybody else is sitting in tears and you're going to encourage them. Because I tell you, when you see certain things come to pass, you know what you're going to do? You're going to look up. You're going to lift up your heads. Because you know that your redemption draweth nigh. You're going to probably do what I have, what I'm going to do. I imagine that one time and I said, I know what I, I, I already know what I'm going to do. When I see this, I'm going to cry. When it passes, I'm going to cry. You'll risk your life to do the will of God in the earth because your father's prophecies are coming to pass. And you'll be strengthened so much. And you'll trust him all the more. Even for those who can hardly trust him right now, you're going to trust him like you never did before. 
because you're going to see his hand move across the face of the earth. And you will know the creator is not a dream. You'll be uplifted. That's why you shouldn't fear now. You won't think the way you do now. When the true trouble comes. Everything is in balance. The greater the trouble, the greater the spirit that will be poured into you. Don't worry about such things. But your task for today. And the day you wake up. Is to choose that day that you woke up in the Lord's day to say, Lord, I'll serve you. You have to choose every single day whom you're going to serve. Because I tell you the truth, if you're serving the Lord today and if you wake up tomorrow and you're not serving him and you die in that day, you lived your life that day without serving him. Your entire life is summed up in today. Huh? Did you serve him today? Because yesterday is gone. I am so... Guys, it's, it's, it's very simple. It gets you very excited, but the change has come. The harvest is ripe. Based on your choice, you will either eat well or not eat at all. But our Father has set before us a table without limitations. I will say yes every day. I will be fed every day. And I'll do whatever he calls me to do for the sake of his work because one day there will be no more of this. One day we will have grown. But I intend on finishing the race. And it's by his power I will finish because he's the author and finisher of our faith. I am not the author of my faith, he is. He is the finisher of my faith, therefore I don't take thought of it. Hmm? So let's go forward. Be prepared in truth. For these, don't, don't think to escape them. That's what those people did who daubed the wall, and they shouldn't have. They always wanted to escape. But rather make it up in your hearts that you're going to serve the Lord. In fact, get out of the habit of speaking about leaving all the time. And just simply say, yes, Lord, I'll serve you again. Your joy will return. Hmm. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. You see, what I hoped for, I found that he answered. 2,000 plus years ago. My hope was that all things I ever did could somehow be washed away from the eyesight of the Father. Jesus did that for me. See, I don't want the Father to look upon me a certain way. I really don't. Because I can see His love in the earth. And my own flesh separates me from Him. I don't want to be separated. Then Jesus came. That's my good news. Jesus is my personal good news. He really is. When you understand the depth of the separation from the flesh and the Father, you can't help but to embrace all things of Christ. And you will walk like an iron lion in this earth. Not a roaring lion. An iron lion that no one can overtake. You'll go forward. You'll have no desire to go backward. Your desires to do things that you used to do will no longer be there. Your mind will stay stayed upon the Lord and his things. By doing that, you'll actually see him in his movements in the earth. Yes, he will come. But the change will come before he does. Because he said so. Are you ready for it? God bless you guys. I got a schedule. I have to schedule. We might have a study in the morning. Just in case. We might have a study. We are doing things to the site. Mobile. Some of you guys have flipped over to the mobile site somehow. I don't know how that happened. 
But you wrote me emails and said, oh, COT is totally different. But that was the mobile side. It was It's fitting on your phone. We got to take that line back out of there. Nobody's supposed to access the mobile site only for certain regions and uh, certain places. So if we do an Enoch study in the morning, if we do that, it's going to be around 1030. We'll begin around 1030. Okay, if we do that. So we'll see. All right, no promises on that. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to say God bless everybody. Our links on the page, I'll bet the content has been removed, but the links on the home page are working fine. They're working fine. And um, so those are okay right now. Those are good to go. The presentation, those black portions you see on the screen, the three um, pieces you see there, those are presentation uh, apps, or not apps, containers. They'll be filled full of content and, and um moving imagery, things of that nature, notes. You'll get used to it. And then our library is will be accessible, uh, likely this weekend. Likely this weekend. God bless you all. Have a blessed, have a blessed, blessed day. Pray for one another. Let's go forward here in COT. God bless.